welcome to this video on accelerating UVM verification with emulation. My name is Henry and I'll be providing a brief introduction to emulation for those of you who haven't heard of emulation or for those of you who are fairly new to emulation. This video will be helpful to individuals who are currently using a simulator and are experiencing extremely long simulation runtimes lasting hours to days to even weeks. First, I'll talk a little bit about Accelera and the SCHEME standard, which describes the method for communicating between simulator and emulator. This will be a relatively mid to high level overview without going into too much detail about the specific syntax or API within the standard. Then I'll talk about Aldex emulation platform, what it is, some of its features, and its benefits over simulation. I'll also give a brief guide for modifying UVM test benches to make them accelerated and uh, to demonstrate the real world benefits of accelerating your test bench, I will now begin a traditional simulation run of a network on chip design with a UVM test bench which will require the entirety of this presentation to complete. At the end, I'll run the same design but with the test bench modified for acceleration and the design running in an emulator to compare run times. So what is Accelera and what is the SCHEME standard? Uh, Accelera is an organization comprised of individuals from the semiconductor industry who come together to create standards which work across all tool vendors. This results in a unified ecosystem of languages and methodologies for the community. For example, the Universal Verification Methodology, uh, or UVM for short, was born out of Accelera and the SCHEME standard, which stands for Standard Co-Emulation Modeling Interface, is also an Accelerator standard. The standard aims to answer the question, how does my test bench, which is running in a simulator, communicate with my design, which is running in an emulator? The SCHEME standard describes three major ways to communicate between simulator and emulator. There's the macro-based interface, which is used for um, people who want to write their test benches in C and C++. There's the function-based interface for users who prefer using System Verilog's DPI to call functions and tasks between simulator and emulator. And there are pipes which make use of System Verilog interfaces for users requiring stream-like communication between the simulator and emulator. Each of these methods has their own strengths and weaknesses. Macro-based generally provides the most control over the components inside the emulator, but can be cumbersome to learn due to its requirement for strict adherence to a predetermined API. It's also not compatible with UVM due to its requirement for a C or C++ test bench. The function-based interface is more intuitive and convenient for users of System Verilog who want to create their own functions and tasks, but suffers from performance drawbacks due to frequent context switching between simulator and emulator. Pipes are useful for sending large amounts of data back and forth without having to worry about handshaking between the simulator and emulator, but requires extra logic for processing of the data once the data is received from the pipe. I will focus the rest of this video on function-based and pipes-based interfaces, as these two are most directly applicable to UVM-based test benches. For the SCHEME function-based interface, you'll write synthesizable functions and tasks that will run in the emulator. Then, when you want to execute that function or task, you simply make the call from your test bench, which is running in the simulator. The pipes-based interface is much more involved and requires more data management by the user. Here you can see the in-pipe handle for a SCHEME dynamic input pipe class. This class is predefined by the SCHEME standard. The constructor accepts the path to the location of the corresponding pipe in the emulator. The pipe is then filled using the predefined send bytes function. A final flush call is made to empty the data into the emulator. 
And on the emulator side, we instantiate a Schemi input pipe system Verilog interface. This interface is also predefined by the Schemi standard. We can then call the built-in receive task to receive the data from the pipe. Uh, and additional logic is required to organize the data received from the input pipe in order to stimulate the dot. There are two parts to Aldex emulation platform. The emulator, which is the actual hardware that the design will be running on, and the design verification manager, which is the software required to compile your design files and configure the emulator hardware. Images of the hardware emulation solutions, or HES for short, can be seen on the left, and the GUI of the Design Verification Manager, or HESDVM for short, can be seen on the right. The emulator is FPGA based, which means its execution of your design's functionality will be much faster than using a general purpose CPU. It's scalable, additional FPGAs can be added to the system to increase the capacity of the emulator as the design size increases. It's reusable for prototyping. After you are finished emulating your design, you can use the same emulator to prototype your design. The Design Verification Manager will compile the design for execution in the emulator. It supports a variety of languages and constructs which are traditionally unsynthesizable, but due to the specialized and dedicated hardware in an emulator, Emulation tools like HESDVM can often support these unsynthesizable constructs within the design. These constructs include, but are not limited to, System Verilog DPI import and export functions and tasks, initial blocks, delay statements, implicit state machines, events, and a variety of system tasks. To accelerate or make your test bench emulation ready, you must create the appropriate bus functional models to stimulate your design and you must also modify your UVM test bench to communicate with these synthesized bus functional models. Here you can see a small example using the Schemi function based use model. A UVM driver class is used as a proxy. It calls the right task in the BFM which is running in the emulator and Note that these test benches, which have been modified, are also simulatable. So once you make these modifications uh, for emulation, they are still usable for pure simulation. And Aldec offers a variety of bus functional models for common protocols so that users are not required to develop their own. Available bus functional models for various protocols include PCIe, USB, Ethernet, AMBA 4.0 and 3.0, and many others. The emulation process using HESDVM involves a few steps. First, you must compile your design files using HESDVM. This is where typical compile time issues are caught, such as syntax errors. Then synthesis occurs where the design is converted to a gate level netlist and during implementation, the gate level netlist is mapped to resources available in the programmable logic, and the result of implementation produces a bitstream file, which is used to program uh, FPGAs. Finally, we can run the test bench files in a simulator, and the simulator will communicate with the emulator to stimulate the design. Now, I'll demonstrate a quick example of acceleration on a network on chip design with the UVM test bench. The design can be imagined as a network of addressable nodes in a grid pattern. The blue and green squares that you see represent a single node, and each node can send and receive messages to any adjacent node. The nine red squares are BFMs intended to generate traffic and are communicating with the test bench through schemey pipes and functions. Uh, note that the time required to complete the simulation from the beginning of this presentation was 394 seconds. 
and the time required to complete an emulation run for the same design is two seconds. For more information or to evaluate Aldex hardware emulation solutions, please contact us at sales at or visit our website at aldex.com. Thank you for watching.